Hi, it's Gene. Retired in Mexico, and we ask one question if you're new to the channel, which is, do they write them and sing them like they used to? Now, a lot of people, young and old, they think the old music is better, but I am not so sure. I'm a defender of the 21st century. And today we're going to continue our countdown of the 30 best favorite. I'm not saying these are the best. My favorite albums of the year 2007. And we've already done two parts. So this is uh, the top 10, folks, top 10. So let me go ahead and pull up my spreadsheet. And uh, here we go. So number 10, we'll get right into it. And by the way, if you like what I'm doing here, do hit that like or subscribe button. It really helps. Um, so number 10 here, and let me make sure that uh, you can see this. Um, yeah, there we go. This is Rufus Wainwright. And it's the album, uh, his Carnegie Hall concert. So what this is, is in 1961, Judy Garland did a, um, a show, I don't know, on Broadway or in New York somewhere. Well, Carnegie Hall. Okay. So she did that show and it's considered one of the best live music performances ever but i have a, l a little bit of a hard time with it because i'm not a huge judy garland uh fan i like her in the movies but just listening to the recording of that but then rufus wainwright he he did all the songs in the same order and they're fantastic. I prefer this Rufus Wainwright over the original Judy Garland. So he does all the songs in the same order. And he's got a couple family members like his sister, Martha Wainwright, and his mother, um, Kate McGarrigal. Is that his mother? Or is it Anne McGarrigal? One of the McGarrigal sisters. And they guessed on a couple songs. And, you know, it's just all those songs like Foggy Day and Somewhere Over the Rainbow. And it's a double disc set and it does not get uh, boring. The orchestra just nails it. They, they come in and I highly recommend this album, Rufus Wainwright. And uh, yeah, let's see if I got any other notes on here. Uh, 36 piece orchestra. And in my opinion, it's a tour de force. It's a exact replication or recreation of the original concert all right coming in at number nine uh you know i'm pretty picky about my neo prog uh i've got a friend that's his favorite genre that in classic rock and, and i really try to get into it i like some bands like big big train um but when it comes to neo prog i think this might be my all-time favorite 21st century progressive rock album and that's fear of a blank planet which of course is a pun on public enemies fear of a black planet and this is porcupine tree uh stephen wilson man that's how i like it um classic rock called it the album of the year can you believe that uh it, it got really good ratings uh let me tell you the ratings here Four and a half on all music, uh, 82 on Metacritic, and on Rate Your Music, it was number 22. That includes uh, compilations. And by the way, I do uh, include compilations and best ofs, uh, but I'll, I'll give you a little bit of a spoiler alert here. This top 10 this year does not have any compilations in it. So we've been hitting a few of those along the way, but my top 10 is all music from um, 2007. So, uh, and a couple guest artists on here, Alec Lifeson from Rush and Robert Fripp from King Crimson. But I don't, re I don't think they're utilized that well. Maybe Lifeson more than Fripp. And, uh, oh, songs like Sleep Together and all these songs on here, they're just so fantastic. Uh, I had the great privilege to see uh, Stephen Wilson in concert, and he did a couple of these tracks, and that really helped me fall in love with it. Uh, yeah, Porcupine Tree, it's, it, it might be the only appearance by them 
on these lists. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to hit them up again, but Fear of a Blank Planet, that's that's the go-to Porcupine Tree album, and I highly recommend it. Uh, when I saw them in concert, uh, the bass player switched off to Chapman Stick for about half the show. I love the Chapman Stick, and just really a dark and moody album about being um, disconnected from society. Yeah, it's great. All right, coming in at number eight is a world music album and a band that I've seen twice in concert. And this is Tenari One. So let me make sure that you are seeing this correctly. There we go. Tenari One. They are from Mali, but they're from... Um, they're from East Mali. So the birthplace of the blues and so much music comes from Western Mali. And these guys are actually, um, they actually, they actually uh, spent part of their time in Libya because Mali borders Libya and they actually trained under Muammar Gaddafi, if you can believe that. And um, a lot of their, album covers not this one but a lot of their album covers um or other pictures i've seen of them will have them with guitars and machine guns ak-47s and guitars i mean pretty intense so very unique band but they're a tuareg band t-a-u-r-e-g and most of the music is mid-tempo uh this was their not their debut but it's their sophomore album, but it, for all intents and purposes, it was like a debut because this is when they got traction. And one thing that's kind of interesting about this album here, this is back when they had some female vocalists. Uh, by the time I saw them, the two times they were an all-male outfit. But they are just guitars and percussion, and that's all. No keyboards. Uh, there is, I think there's a bass player. But it's almost all guitars and percussion and then hand claps. And they all dress in the traditional Tuareg uh, uh, costume, if you want to call that, or their, their homeland clothing with the cloth over their faces. And they are so cool. If you have not checked out um, Tanari Wen, check this out. This is called... Aman Iman, which I believe means water of life. Let's see if I got any more notes on that. Um, yeah, Desert Blues. That's what I put in my notes. And this is the first album I heard by them. All right, number seven band you guys know I like if you've been following these countdowns as I'm a big fan of Wilco. An, another band that I, oh, and by the way, I saw Rufus Wainwright too, I guess, seeing people in concert. I saw Rufus Wainwright, Stephen Wilson, Tanari one, two times, and then this next band, Wilco. Saw them one time. They were fantastic. And it was around, uh, it was around this time. It might have been this tour. But anyway, this is Sky Blue Sky. And this is an album that not everyone loved. Uh, uh, you know, they're a critically acclaimed band, but uh, 4.0 on all music, Metacritic 73, Rate Your Music 321. But here's the surprise. Pitchfork gave it 5.2. And I totally disagree. I just think uh, the new lineup on here with Nels Klein and everybody, there's some fantastic guitar songs like um impossible germany and side with the seeds and these are great tracks and and they had the nerve to call it uh dad rock i don't agree i don't agree this is uh nels klein and pat sansone's uh studio debut with the band terrific album is it wilco's best no but it's, it's a damn good album and uh on all of these, what do I what do I give these? Um, I would say all of these albums so far are four and a half stars for me. Rufus, Porcupine Tree, Tenari One, Wilco. Yeah, these are all four and a half star albums for me. So I disagree with Pitchfork, uh, Dad Rock, really. 
Um, now, Wilco later on would kind of maybe move into that arena a little bit, but they weren't there yet, not on this album, not in 2007. And one of the best live bands, highly recommend Sky Blue Sky, an underrated album. Coming in number six is an album that we actually did an entire podcast on, and you guys will be really glad to see that uh, I have this and own it. It's uh, Burial, Untrue. Let me make sure I've got this where you can see it. There we go. So dubstep. Yeah, and this won't be the last time I've got some dubstep on my list. I'm already working on my 2008 list. Uh, I've been listening to music, uh, listening ahead for the next one, and I've already got a dubstep album on there. I'll keep you surprised, but I digress. Uh, Burial Untrue. You guys probably know this album. What can you say? It's just a great mix of dubstep, garage, and ambient music to create a really nice variety. That's what I like about this album. It's not samey at all. Uh, there's um, a good, those three styles all intermingled on there. And boy, it was this album uh, highly praised. Uh, all Music, five stars, Pitchfork, 8.4, Metacritic, 90, Rate Your Music, number six album. Again, that's including um, compilations and bests of. Um, I probably would give this four and a half stars, but I love it nonetheless. And I've played it a bunch of times and I've been a little bit negligent and really going into a deep dive on Burial's entire catalog. But the problem is this is the album that I just love so much. I just keep returning to it. And all these songs on here, uh, Archangel, the first track, that's fantastic. Fantastic. But like I say, it gets into a lot of different styles. And uh, am I a huge dubstep fan? Probably not. But when it's this good, it's going to be number six on my list. Number five is an album that I thought I owned, but I couldn't find it. I know I did own it. So I either still own it and can't find it or I. I sold it. I did sell a lot of albums before moving down to Mexico. And this is MIA, Kayla, which, of course, had a huge, huge hit in Paper Planes. But if you listen to the whole album, uh, that song is, that song's great, but all the songs are great. And mashup of rap, electronics, and world music, I find it irresistible. Uh, I like her first album and this one, her sophomore album, M.I.A. Kayla from uh, Sri Lanka slash London. So she was born in Sri Lanka, but raised in London. And her style of rap, if you can call it rap, is so unusual. I love British rap. I like, um, uh, what's her name? Uh, Kate, um, Kate Tempest. And I like um, his name's escaping me now. Um, but oh, I hate that when I blank out like that. So I guess at my age, I don't have to apologize, though, do I? Hmm. Maybe you guys expect it from me. But MIA, Kayla, uh, I'm sure you know it. So there's not much I can say about it. This also gets five stars. On AMG, 8.9, Pitchfork, 87, Metacritic, 67 on Rachel Music. Sounds about right. Um, I think I'm still at four and a half star territory, but inching towards five stars. So number four is uh, a mix of a veteran and a slightly newer artist. This is Robert Plant and Alison Krauss, Raising Sand, produced by T-Bone Burnett. I had a copy of this. I can't find it, so I must have sold it. Um, AMG only gives it four stars, but I think this is a stellar band on here. And the song selection, so good, so good. And some of the deep tracks are the best tracks. 
So everything on here is a cover, uh, except for Please Read the Letter, which was actually recorded on um, Page and Plants Walking in Clarksdale. And I've listened to that version. I much prefer this one. But uh, this is one of those albums, uh, like what Dylan is doing, where moving forward by going backwards. It's a great trick. And absolutely love this. These guys harmonize so well. If you watch interviews with them, you know, Robert Plant had never done harmony vocals before. So he was, he wasn't sure he wanted to do this project, but he and Alison Krauss sing so well together. And I like her songs just as well as his. Um, yeah, there's uh, the song for Sister Rosetta Thorpe on there. And this is great. I wish I had it so I could read because really just about every track is stellar. I think I think I probably would give this five stars. I think we're in five star territory now. So number four, Robert Plant and Alison Krauss. And I am a big fan of Robert Plant in the 21st century and not such a big fan of his 80s and 90s output. Uh, some of that stuff was some of the production on those albums uh, has aged. But in 2001, he put out an album called Dreamland. It was really well produced, and he's been on a roll ever since, and uh, either doing his style of world electronic music or doing these uh, more retro albums. All right, what's the top three going to be? Any ideas? All right, number three, dance music. LCD Sound System, Sound of Silver, another album that I thought I owned. Uh, I could swear I owned this album, but I can't find it. And anyway, um, this one's got a real band feel to it, a real band feel. It doesn't just sound like a some kind of James Murphy solo project. It sounds like everybody's playing together, and I like that. It's not robotic. It's got a lot of uh, humanity in it, a lot of humor, humor with beats, as I call it. Uh, AMG gave this five stars, Pitchfork 9.2, Metacritic 86, Rate Your Music number seven. I agree with all of that. I love LCD Sound System. And this has, um, I'm trying to think of the tracks. I'm, I didn't take a lot of notes for this. What is it? All My Friends and... New York, you're bringing me down. I think those are the tracks on there, but you can correct me if I'm wrong. But just so many wonderful, wonderful tracks. I like this whole album from start to finish and can't recommend it enough. Okay, what's number two and number one? My number two album is the number one album on Rate Your Music. So what could possibly beat out this album? And I have the original copy that I ripped. Radiohead, In Rainbows, fantastic album, five, five stars all the way. And this is my CDR, because you might remember in 2007, they released it digitally and told people to pay what they wanted for it. And I still remember what I paid for this uh, down at the used record store, the average price of a used CD was $7.99, and that's what we paid for it. I um, Some of the tracks on here that I like are the deeper tracks. I like um, my favorite songs in here are probably Nude, Weird Fishes, Arpeggi, And maybe Reckoner. Yeah. But every single uh, song on here is just great. You can see the tracks on there. Printed my own cover. And Radiohead, what can, what can you say? Probably my favorite band of the 21st century. Every song, Stellar. Five stars yeah i agree so um amg only gave it four and a half stars but i give it five and pitchfork gave it a 9.3 so i think they were on the money there metacritic 88 rachel music 
number one album. Can't argue with Radiohead, but what could possibly have beaten out Radiohead? And I didn't think anything would, but I just kept playing these two albums back and forth, back and forth, and decided to give the nod to Arcade Fire Neon Bible. Uh, this is not quite as highly rated as the Radiohead. Four stars on AMG, 8.4 Pitchfork, which is very respectable. Metacritic, 87. So rate your music, 39. So top 40. But I think this is my favorite Arcade Fire. I like this, I think, better than Funeral and the Suburbs. It's anthemic. It's melodic. It's singable. I love every track on there. And I never get tired of this album. And I just give it the slight edge over Radiohead. Yeah, Arcade Fire from Toronto, Neon Bible, my favorite Arcade Fire album. And I loved it when I first uh, bought it. So most of these albums here I was listening to in 2007. Um, maybe not Fear of a Blank planet the porcupine tree i think i came to that a few years later but pretty much everything else on here i was listening to in current time and love these albums i owned the vast majority of them or had downloaded them so that's it so rufus wainwright porcupine tree tenari one wilco burial mia robert plant and allison kraus lcd sound system Radiohead Arcade Fire. I'll put this up at the end of the uh, video. And also, um, if you're still with me, Spotify playlist, I will add uh, song selections from these to the other 20 albums that I featured. So it comes out to about a 10 to 12 hour playlist. Um, I try to keep it short, but it's 30 albums. And if you pick four or five songs from an album, you, you end up with a, a list that long, but I think it's a great playlist and I encourage you to check it out. So go ahead and check the link in the description below. And that's it. As we say here in Bonita, Mexico, which it's very beautiful right now here in the, it's a mile high here in the mountains. It's very beautiful. Uh, as we say here, Bonita Dia. <laughs>